Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. After nine years, this Prime Minister is not worth the drugs, dis disorder, death, and destruction. In May of 2022, he granted the BC NDP government's request for a criminal code exemption to allow crack, meth, heroin, and fentanyl use Shame. in parks, coffee shops, hospitals, beaches. Overdose deaths since exploded to a record-smashing 2,500 lost lives. The BC NDP government has reversed course and asked the federal government to recriminalize some hard drugs. Why won't this prime minister recriminalize these deaths? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Mental Health and Addictions. Mr. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we answered the call of the BC government when they requested the exemption on decriminalization of personal possession of certain illicit drugs. Mr. Speaker, what is driving this overdose crisis is the illegal drug supply. Every life lost is a tragedy. I met with Minister Whiteside this past Friday. We are reviewing their exemption request. Mr. Speaker, we have a clear lens on public health and public safety because we have a plan. They do not. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. She's wasting time while people are dying. In the year after this radical Prime Minister granted the decriminalization of crack, heroin and other hard drugs in parks and hospitals, 2,500 people died. The overdose death in the nine years of this Prime Minister have tripled to the fastest rising of the 11 countries studied by the Commonwealth Fund. Nurses are afraid to go to work because they have to put up with addicts using meth, crack and weapons in their hospital room. Even nurses are having to give up on breastfeeding because they're worried their kids will be contaminated with the drugs they breathed in. What the hell are they thinking over there? Yeah. The Honourable Member as a long-time member of this House, I'll just ask him to withdraw the, the just withdraw the uh, offensive word because it is not parliamentary. I withdraw because they're not thinking over there. The Honourable Government House Leader. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, last week we saw the Leader of the Opposition once again encourage supporters of white supremacy and invite the government house leader to, uh, to, to start from the top and to choose his words very carefully so that they do not cause disorder in the house. Mr. Speaker, last week we saw the leader of the opposition once again visit with supporters of white supremacy, anarchy and misogyny. This has been a regular occurrence. He draws the admiration of people who dismiss the slaughter children in schools. The Leader of the Opposition now has 30 seconds to speak to this House and to Canadians once I sit down. I ask him to clearly disavow the views of these dangerous people. Will he do that? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I unequivocally disavow the guy who spent the first half of his adult life as a practicing racist dressing up in blackface. Hamas. He's accepted the support of Hamas 
Pence, and now he's he's brought on the extremist and radical position of allowing legal drug use in playgrounds, in hospitals, in coffee shops that has led to the mass death of our people. Will he not refuse the demand of Toronto to replicate the decriminalization nightmare? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, I'm sad to say the leader of the Conservatives, the opposition, has shown us his true colours. He speaks without conviction and clarity on a question that should be very, very, very simple for him to address. His silence speaks volumes. This is not leadership, Mr. Speaker. This is political cowardice. Yes.